All right, Derek. Derek, oh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Uh, I was born in Toledo, Ohio, is where I was born. And you were raised? Uh, in between Toledo and Detroit area. And tell me about your family growing up. You had, you had mom and dad? Yep. Uh, my mom is dead now. She died about 10 years ago. And But I grew up, uh, uh, went to Catholic school for 12 years, um, was a uh, really competitive wrestler, played a lot of sports. Uh, um, had a good family, had a good mom and dad. Uh, uh, I'm 45. I was born in uh, 76, so I grew up in the 80s. Uh, was probably the last generation with uh, no um, internet, stuff like that. You right. know, so. yeah. But your childhood was good, no crazy. No, no, no crazy like traumatic incidents yeah. or anything like that. And uh, you went to high school? Yeah, yeah. After uh, that, you... I graduated high school, yeah, and soon after that, I just immediately after that, I had two children that are, I think, they're twenty five and twenty six now. They're a week less than a year apart. Mm -hmm. Did you raise them? Uh, I paid child support. Uh, <laughs> their mother raised them for a couple of years, and then the state took them from her and gave them to my mother and father. So. I was around, but they were raised basically by my mother and father. I paid child support and I wasn't a great dad, but yeah, I paid my child support. Yeah. <laughs> That's my claim to fame. Right. And you, uh, you've, you've had jobs before? Yeah, I've had a lot of jobs. Yeah. I can hold a job. Yeah. But, but t like today you're living a very different lifestyle yeah, yeah. than you have in the past, I take it. Yep. T tell me about how you live today. Um, I just travel from place to place and, uh, I hitchhike wherever I go. I usually, I don't take too many buses or anything. I, I uh, hitchhike and I do a lot of Pacific Crest trailing and just a lot of San Gabriel mountain trailing out of LA. And uh, I spend a lot of time doing that these days. I go to Oregon. I spend a lot of time in Oregon hiking those mountains. And, uh, but- uh, You stay on the West Coast? Yeah, I always stay usually on the West Coast. Sometimes I go to like Quartzite, Arizona, or uh, I did that like a couple of years ago, or um, uh, Slab City or something like that. You know, I go places like uh, Tahoe, Mount Shasta. I do that every year now. And and you walk most of it? I walk most of it or uh, I when I'm trailing and uh, when I'm not catching a ride, I, I don't stand still and hitchhike. I actually, that's like the term hitchhiking, it kind of in terms you're or uh, hitching and hiking, <laughs> otherwise you're maybe just hitching. But uh, yeah, so like, like if you don't get any, if you don't get a ride, you make can make 20 miles, you know? It's, how, uh, how many miles do you walk in a day, you think? Um, always 20, but like I said, we were talking before, sometimes I did four 30 mile days last year. Wow. And uh, could check out my YouTube too. <laughs> Uh, you ever train hop stuff like that? Uh, yeah, I've hopped a couple trains, but I'm not big on it, especially with the dogs. Uh, I've done a couple of easy hops, but that's not really my thing. Train riding isn't really my thing. It's more hitchhiking. So, what, what attracted you to this this vagabond lifestyle? Um, what, what would you call yourself? Are you a drifter? Are you a vagabond? What are, what are you? Yeah, them are both good terms. I just a traveler or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I never really fit in with the regular society. I've never had a credit card. I've never had a car note. I've never had a, 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 a mortgage. You know, I've never had like, like, I don't know. I just never really bought into it, into society. I still don't. <laughs> hence <laughs> and the, I just, I've never been happier than doing this, you know. Hence I, the face tattoos. Yeah, right, right, right. That'll, that'll, that'll stop you from getting a job. It's like, why did, why did you do that? It's like, eh. It makes people, it keeps people away from me, but really it doesn't. It's like a magnet. It works like the opposite. It's like it drew you. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, that was part of it. It's probably more the dogs than anything. The whole, the whole. The, like you said, yeah, what do I do now? Now I put dogs on my back and you'll see that later or whatever. And, and so you, you, you'll, like I saw you in Santa Monica and you're, you're out with your sign and you, you, how much money will you collect uh, in a day of doing that? Um, I mean, there's a limited time and window I can do it. I have to have shade. And I'm with your back. It, I can only do that maybe three hours a day at max. And then the dogs only want to work two or three hours a day. So I have a window, but I can usually bring in like 
on a weekend, like maybe a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and that, that works for us cause we don't have any bad habits. So. Yeah. So drugs are part of your life or no? No, no. I'd smoke pot, but I mean, in my lifestyle, you just get that for free. People just give it to you like on the road. I mean, in my pack, I probably got close to a pound of weed <laughs> in my pack. <laughs> it's legal now. So it's not yeah, it's legal. Yeah. But uh, the harder drugs are something you've ever played with or no? Yeah. Yeah. I used to in the nineties and in the uh, early two thousands, still a little bit was uh, drinking and stuff, but I used to smoke a lot of crack after I was drinking and I used to go to jail a lot. I've been to prison a couple of times, all stemming from drugs and alcohol. Was alcohol the, the beginning of it all? Yeah, alcohol was definitely the, the, uh, the main factor. And since I quit drinking, I mean, I've been in California 10 years and I've never been arrested. And came close a few times, but it could have something to, fact to, do, or something to do with the fact that uh, California is not quite like a police state like Ohio and Michigan either, so. But, and what, what does your family think of, of your lifestyle? Um, well, my mother never got to see it because it, this really started when my mother died. Oh, is that right? So, yeah, it's like, and because then my dad, like, got a new life right away almost with a new wife and then kids younger than my kids, you know, stepkids younger than my kids. So it's like she was kind of the glue and then the family, like, fell apart after that, like, my kids are doing their own things now, you know, have their own family. My daughter, had, my son is struggling, you know, uh, I think like I did, but my daughter is a graduate of Cincinnati. She went on a full scholarship and she is a nurse and has a kid and two dogs and a husband who's a nurse and a house and a car and all that stuff. She fully bought in. So, yeah. So what, what do you, where do you think you get this, this, inclin um, this inclination? Is it, in you just in your DNA? I think so. Yeah. I mean, was yeah. there someone you saw that was doing this and then you said, I want to do that? I, you know what, to tell you the truth, I can remember being 17 and 18 and, and getting into some trouble. And I remember, th I remember thinking when I was 17 and 18, contemplating ways in my head before I ever had kids or anything and was contemplating ways in my head like how I could live in these abandoned buildings near th that area mm -hmm. and like and like how I could survive and that would be warm and it's like I've always had these like things in my head now it's more like in the woods and you know and and uh I mean I've built cabins and like I've done a lot I mean I'm a serious serious hiker I've done a lot of hiking and uh, so, so you'll I document most of it. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have like a bunch of uh, Pacific Crest Trail and and uh, and um, Appalachian Trail and uh, a bunch of other stuff. I have a, a a YouTube and a Facebook and a Facebook that I document everything on. Oh, really? So you've been you've been all over the country? Yeah, yeah. I have been. I've been all over the country, but I like it here the best. I keep coming. I it's better in California than anywhere. Do you have any regrets? Um, you know, not really, not, 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 not too much. I mean, I don't wake up every day and it's like, man, I wish I didn't, I wish I didn't face. do that or I wish <laughs> I didn't do this. No, I mean, I, I like who I am and what I do. I really do. I like the lifestyle that I live and I'm happier than I've ever been. And if conforming is just not for you. No, uh, 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 uh. I mean, it takes all kinds, right? I used to think people just think want everybody to be like them, like get a job and this and that. And it's like, everybody can't be like everybody. It takes all different kinds. It takes a whole spectrum, you know, it's like- And you're not to, hurting anybody. To make the world go round. No, I, I try not to, no, I mean, seriously, I try not to. I try to be a good person and have good karma. You, you, you support yourself by panhandling? Yeah, yep. And nothing else, there's no- um, I, for the last three years, I wasn't even getting food stamps, but when I was just in the San Francisco area, they have really good services and stuff on the, like the Haight-Ashbury area is where I hang out, the hippie area, Grateful Dead area, and uh, Haight-Ashbury, and uh, they have really good services there, and uh, um, they'll help you get your food stamps and everything, you know, with like not even having to go like downtown because I'm not good. That's why I don't do that stuff. I'm not good with dealing with like people and stuff, but they'll come out right there on the street and do it on their phones for you. Like the, the, um, 
what would you call them, the outreach workers yeah, yeah, right, and yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. San Francisco is a really good. And my outreach worker was Saskia. Shout out to Saskia. She's helped a lot of people. And um, do, do you have friends? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I have uh, most of them in San Francisco. Uh, and I have traveling friends that are like um, all over the place, but it seems like San Francisco is the main hub. Like Venice used to be a little bit, but San Francisco, the Haight-Ashbury area, right by Golden Gate Park right there, that's the main hub for travelers now, where everybody goes there. That's where all the travelers' main hub is. Is, is it the lack of responsibility that uh, appeals to you with this lifestyle? Um, that's definitely part of it. And the... Uh, you're not paying any bills. You're not going to exactly. Work. I used to stress a lot. I'm a stressor, and I know people stress, and it kills you. And I, you can, I, I, you don't realize that when you're younger, but when you get older, you can actually feel it and see it killing you. And yeah, I don't like the responsibility. I like the uh, the being stress free, and I like to like some days. I'm just like, I can just get mad or somebody say something to me, and you know, and or something just happened, you know, I mean, cause people say mean stuff to you. I mean, I, it's okay. I'm, I'm tough. I can take it, but still, it, do, do you get treated badly, but on the sometimes, street? yeah, I mean, what's, what's the worst I thing? try not to let people treat me badly though. You know, I try to, uh, stick up for myself and others. What's the worst thing that's happened to you? Um, well, I'll tell you a, a story like stuff like this. I just, people see me and they see like the, uh, the, Average, but I was in Las Vegas and I used to work outside the Paris or the, uh, the MGM, which is across the street from like the Paris, not far and doing my dog thing. And so every morning I'd go into the Paris and use the bathroom. And some days I would, I don't really gamble or anything. Like I said, I don't have any bad habits, but some days I would be feel bad just for going in there and using the bathroom. So I'd play like a, a, a slot or something like a dollar's worth of slots or a spin. So one morning I had, I went in there and I would change my change too and get and get cash for it because people would give me a lot of change. So I went in there with like forty dollars worth of change one day and I cashed it. Went in there, you know. So all these cameras are watching you as you go in, and I cashed the forty dollars worth of change first and got forty dollars, and then went up to the roulette table and put ten on black and lost it, and then put ten more on black and got it back, so broke even, and then walked over to the uh, slot machines and started playing the slot. And I'll play a couple of spins on one and then take the receipt out and then move to the next one and then take the receipt out, move to the next one, you know, play like a few spins on each one. And so I'm doing that and I got the uh, dog with me and a guy comes, I'm dressed kind of like this, but like overalls like this on, but they looked worse. They had used to have patches all over them and stuff. Guy walks up to me and says, I'm going to have to ask you to leave like a, a security guy, like undercover security guy. And I'm like, I'm like, well, this is my service animal. I was like, but I'll leave if you want. He's like, that's not why. He's like, we've seen you taking receipts out of machines. And I was like, yeah, you did, because they're my fucking receipts. I was like, I, I was like, did you, you must have seen me changing forty dollars worth of, you know, uh, a change. And did you see me playing uh, uh, ten dollars spins on the roulette wheel? Two ten dollars spins, and it's like people just see what they want to see, and. People see you steal stuff that you didn't steal or take something that, and people swear with their, that's what I'm saying. And this guy has everything on camera, you know? And it's like, do you even get an apology for that? No, but if I was a yuppie, I would have been eating for free. I would have been gambling for free. My room would have been comped, but they would never make that mistake with somebody that was- Did you, did you have the face tattoos then? Uh, I had the, like the skull one, yeah. the, the others not. Yeah, see the face tattoos free people. But I still had a lot of, tattoos you know but it's like yeah people like that's when i learned to like cops and security and stuff people think like they watch tv and stuff and think all this stuff is like so high tech and like these people like yes um technology is high tech but the people using it are clowns usually you know it's like they are not everybody but it's like it, it's like that for everything there's a bunch in any business in anything there's clowns and there's professionals you know like when even what i do there's clowns and there's people like me that are professionals, you know, it's like some people just get five dollars and go buy a hit of fucking meth, you know, not me, dude. I'm staying for the get what I need, you know, and it's like and I'm not going to spend it on meth and I'm going to get what I need. So what, what are you afraid of? What do you worry about? Um, losing my dogs. That's really the one thing that's the biggest thing I worry about or getting hurt and having to take like a hospital trip or something and because I can't go to the hospital.
Yeah, your life comes apart. With dogs, exactly. Yeah. So I try to be really careful. Are you lonely? Um, not, not too much, no. It's like, I, when you're younger, you're chasing women around and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm 45, so I come to the point in my life now, I'm really happy with myself. It's like, I couldn't even be with a woman unless it was somebody that's not going to be on my nerves in five minutes, you know, somebody that I could talk to. It's like, as you get older, things just change, but I'm not, I'm not lonely. Are you, are you, you're, you seem happy. I am. I am genuinely. Um, You're just living a very alternative lifestyle. Right. Yeah. I'm doing what I want to do for sure. It's like, it doesn't take a lot of money to do what I want to do. It's it. And walking makes me happy. It's the one thing that makes me happy, whether I'm road walking or hitchhiking or walking on trails. It's just moving around from place to place and meeting people and, 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 uh, People always say, oh, man, I wish I did what you did. I wish I could do that, you know? And it's like, and it keeps me going. It's like, people always say, keep going. And it's like, now I don't want to quit. I just want to do more and more. And it's like, I've even done like, uh, I've got documented too, like on my channels and stuff. I did, uh, I've rode a bike with a trailer with a dog from LA to San Francisco. And then I've done it on a, when the COVID first started, I bought a three wheel bike, a trike off of a guy. And I rode that trike all the way past San Francisco, all the way to um, Fort Bragg before it broke down, a three-wheeled bike. And let me tell you something, you ain't meant to travel on a three-wheeled bike because on a two-wheeled bike, you're always straight up and down no matter how the roads curve. On a three-wheeled bike, you're always leaning one way Oh, that's what you because can't, you, you can't. the road is curved. Yeah, and it's like, it was hell. It was a five-speed or six-speed like three-wheel bike. And I was like, yeah. Do, do you think some of the negative reaction you get from from strangers when you're on the street is probably th they resent your your freedom and your you know you're you're such a nonconformist here you're you're basically just living however you want to live and they may they might react to how, how they have to conform whether they even realize it or not yeah I, I actually do think that it's funny that you said that I had a guy that I went to high school with and I was really good friends with him and I'm not going to say his name, but he, he told me that he was like, he was like, I love you. But I was like, I don't know whether to resent you or he's like, sometimes I resent you. He was like, because you just don't take any responsibility and you're like, you just like live carefree. And he's like, at this point in his life, he has a lot of responsibility with like, coaching and kids and family and you know and it's like it's a lot of pressure that's a lot of pressure it's a lot of responsibility but there's something to be said for it too i mean that has rewards too yeah there's a, there's a trade-off for both right it is that has rewards too everything we do in life has a trade that's right yeah i mean every, that's not for everybody every it takes all kinds like yeah, you, have to, you have to figure out what works for you that's right then you found something that's fair i think this works for me yeah very, very different me. from most people's lives but uh, and it's not like i just went from this one day like I said, like my YouTube, can I say my YouTube or whatever? Sure, go ahead. It's, uh, I usually don't, but go ahead. It's Deke Brewer, D-E-K-E-B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E and my Facebook is the same, but it's B-R-E-U-E-R. -E -E I just spelled it two different ways. Right. But uh, <laughs> anyways. Won't, I won't make a habit of that. Yeah, anyways. I'm, yeah, you can edit it out if you want. But it just shows the progression of, you know, I didn't just end up like this one day. I didn't know anything about doing the dog. I just started hitchhiking. And I was living... I was in Chicago for a while, like Michigan City, if you know the area, sure. on the, the South Shore line, yeah. living in shelters and stuff, you know? And it was like, I made my way to Portland then, and then made my way to LA and was like, I was clean at the time, but I was like home bumming it, you know? I was like really down on my luck. And one day a tweaker gave me a dog. I was watching it for her. She never showed back up to get it. It was a, a, a and, I was playing ball with the dog then a few days later and the ball went under the car and I'm reaching under the car and the dog started like jumping on my back and a light bulb just went off. I was like, man, I can do like a trick with the dog, you know? And, it, and so I used to just get down and read and the dog would just sit on my back as I read, you know, before the sunglasses or anything. And I put my hat down there one day and people started dropping money in my hat. And I was like, I made like 10 bucks and I was so happy because I could get something to eat and it wasn't broke. and. And then it progressed from there, like with the sunglasses and, you know, 
and things like that. And I've been doing it since. Yeah, and, and about the YouTube, I mean, I don't even monetize or have any like hits or that many followers or anything. So, you know, I don't, I don't do any of that. I just do it for documentation. So do you, do you have, do you have, is it difficult for you to be on the street where you're probably lumped into the whole drug addict, homeless person yeah, yeah. group, even though you're not, you're, you're very different from most of the people that are living on the street. Yeah. Is it difficult for you to be lumped into that group? Um, it's, you know, it's not that bad because I think most people want to like homeless people and want to help homeless people. It's just that they get so bad on drugs and they, uh, people on meth and, uh, they have no boundaries and then they don't care about themselves. So that if you don't, if you hate yourself, you don't care about your garbage and the trail and the mess you leave behind, you know, I think they, people want to like and help homeless people. And I may, I try to make it easy for them. You know, I try to give a good name for people, but it's like, it's. It is very few and far between. I mean, 99% of the people that are, are in this situation are on drugs, are on meth. I mean, the, the shit's everywhere, everywhere. And I mean, it's not just homeless people either. It's people in houses and cars and rich people. And uh, meth is destroying our society. Uh, it's a really bad thing. And, and people are going to keep using it. I mean, it's never going to go away. You've got to give people alternatives to not want to use it, you know, to... Uh, to be happy in other ways or not be you miserable. Think, you think meth is a bigger problem than heroin, fentanyl, crack, anything like that? Um, yeah, I think it is because it's so readily available and so fucking cheap. People just give it to you. That's the problem, you know, and it's like they're just handing you death and people are like, oh, I don't pay for drugs. It doesn't matter. It's killing you. You know, it's like it's but then, I, but then they sell alcohol in, in Grocery stores and yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean that that well. Here's the thing with that. It's like that's just as bad too. Yeah, it but is. it's a slow, methodical death. And even with the the heroin and, and the crack respectful. and stuff, people, you can get off that shit and still have your brain, and still have your your life and and a little bit of sense about you. The the methamphetamine. You see how these people act on the methamphetamine. It turns you. Uh, I I can't say that. I'm not supposed to say retarded, but it turns you. Uh, I call it methamphetamine-induced schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and it it uh or psychosis they call it a psychosis yeah but it's methamphetamine-induced and it's like it doesn't and go lack, lack of sleep too yeah yes but that doesn't go away that the, they call it the new meth now is what they're calling it and that's what they call it the new meth and you can like uh, they were just talking about it on the radio about how quickly now it deteriorates you and does permanent brain damage to you and it just. It's just bad. Everybody on it, you see, they're just talking to themselves. They don't got no shoes on. They, uh, uh, all these conspiracy theories, they're all disheveled. They can't comb their hair. They can't brush their teeth. You know, it's like, it's, they're up, they're walking like zombies. It literally is turning you into a zombie, literally. And it's, it's sad to look at. It is, it is. It's, why, why, why did you uh, put down the drugs? Um, it's been a long time, right? It's been 10 years, I think. So. Yeah, I... I mean, I always liked who I was. I think that's key is you got to learn how to love yourself. If you can't learn to love yourself or even like yourself, it's like, and that's where people are at, I think. it's a, I put it down because I've always liked who I was and I battled all the time. Like I never, like I'd use and then I would beat myself up and be like, man, I can't be doing that. You know, I got, I got to do this or I got these responsibilities and, and it took, it just, it takes sometimes people a while to learn and, and some people never learn. And some people, you know, it's, again, it takes all kinds. Some people learn their lessons. Some people don't. Some people go to jail. Some people die. Um, some people are saved, whatever, you know, it's, but I, I think the key is learning to love yourself or learning, finding something in your life that you can live for or do something, even if it's not you for something else, for a dog, even, you know, it's like, it's, like maybe if you just have a dog, maybe then you have to get up every morning, you know, and, and, and I don't know, I don't know, but, and I don't want to use drugs because I feel bad when I do. And then I feel like you'll be feeling like you're letting the dogs down, you know, or, or anything. I, I can't even get myself to do acid or anything anymore when everybody else is doing it. Cause then the next day I'm like, what am I doing with my life? You know, it's like, what the hell? And I just, I don't even want to use, you, I mean, you'll, you'll get to the point, 
I think I, I tell most people that where you'll either die or you'll get to the point where you just you don't want to use drugs anymore. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody comes to a crossroads at some time, you know, and, and we all make decisions. And but I want to be on this earth. To me, this is a big game. And the longer you can stay on this earth is the, the more you're winning the game. You know, it's like so to win the game, you got to be here forever. So I'm trying to be here forever. <laughs> What would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um, wow, that's a tough one. Um, probably that to work hard for whatever you want, you can get it. But you can't do it by yourself. You, every, it takes, you know, it takes, it's going to take help from, can't do it by yourself. Even though I like to be independent and try to do everything by myself, I can't make my own clothes and hunt my own meat. And, you know, it's like even the Indians couldn't do that. They had a whole tribe, you yeah, know, right. it's like. And so that and I think uh, I used to have no compassion for anybody or no. I still don't have a lot as much as I should probably, but I have more now. Like I can look at people and and not so much feel sorry for them, but like empathize with them a little more and like. It doesn't even matter if I if a person's a drug addict or alcoholic or not. I'll still give them money or something. You know, it's like I don't care what they're going to do with it. It's just sometimes I just see somebody and I feel for them. Or you know, the lady standing on the corner and she's saying dollar, 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 because she wants some coffee or something at McDonald's, and everybody just walks by her and doesn't give her no money. You know, so it's like I'll make a show out of that. Like it's like none of you guys are going to give this lady five dollars or go get something to eat, so I will. But. I try to be I try to be good to bums. I try to the ones that are even not the ones that are so great all the time, but the ones that are even, you know, there's some out there that are using drugs that are at least they're good people. They are, but there's a lot of people out there that are good people, but it even it'll take everything from you and it'll even take your nowadays the drugs will even take your your almost takes your soul now to where you're once you get to a certain point, you're not even a person hardly anymore. Yeah, your behavior becomes so scandalous. Have you seen like zombies out there that like I see some almost every day that are just they're walking like this because they can't walk anymore and their feet are messed up and they can't talk really anymore. Yeah, and I've, like, inter I've interviewed a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, have you? Yeah, yeah. it's bad. Yeah, yeah you can bad. barely communicate with them. Yeah, right, right. But they weren't always like that. No, of course not. And that that makes me sad. It does. It does. There has to be something. There has to be a breaking point. Something has to be done about about something and it's I don't know it's a the methamphetamine is bad it is it's it's I think it stems like all the problems that this city has you know they'll say the homeless problems or the just all the problems that this city has almost stems from methamphetamine that and the money grabs stealing all the money <laughs> yeah but I think if you go a level deeper there's what you said earlier about liking yourself or loving yourself yeah oh yeah because you wouldn't be doing the drug if you... Right, right. That's, and that's what I said. The, the, the key go, is not... And then not, if you go a level deeper, right. then you get... They say, well, we got to get rid of the drug dealers and the cartels. Well, they'll get rid of themselves if you stop buying their drugs. Yeah, but then and, you, you go a level deeper and then it, goes, it gets into parenting. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. And if you stop buying their drugs, but in order to do that, you have to make the kids not want to buy them drugs. All these people that have been using drugs already, they're done already. They're done. You, might, you have to start with the kids. That's where the key is. And they're not building like the city. The schools are all fucked up. The teachers are all fucked off. You know what I'm saying? They're all just worried about themselves and their unions. They're not teaching kids, man. And that's and that's why the society's all fucked up. Is you got to start with kids, dude. It's too late for adults. You got to start with little ass kids and teach them and teach them right. And and it's not even about indoctrinating them. It's about giving them opportunities to do things that don't involve drugs like yeah no loving them and giving them good role models yes yeah and giving them things to do like you know boys and girls more boys and girls clubs and better ones and better facilities it's like you can build all this shit for homeless people and stuff where's all the facilities for kids at with swimming pools and playgrounds you know where the, you can and drop-in centers for poor kids not just for rich kids for poor kids that can just go to these places you know and there's really not any. And then they say, why are all these, what are these kids doing drugs for? You know, it's because they don't have anything else to do. And like you said, role models and coaches and, and things like that, man. All right, Derek, thank you so much for uh, 
sharing your story. <laughs> Very interesting. Your dogs are so well behaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With sunglasses. And Look how well behaved that dog is. <laughs>